Good morning. Today is Tuesday, June 21st. And this is Lorelai again. And today's gospel is about do unto others. So the gospel is taken from St. Matthew's, the gospel of St. Matthew's, verse, chapter 7, verse 6, 12 to 14. <clears throat> and Jesus said, do not give what is holy to dogs and throw your pearls before the swine, lest they trample them underfoot and turn and tear you to pieces. Do to others whatever you would have them do to you. This is the law of the prof and the prophets. Enter to the narrow door, narrow gate, for the gate is wide and broad, broad that leads to destruction. And those who enter through it are many. How narrow the gate and constricted the road, the load leads to life and those who find it are few. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, be my light, be my guide, be the voice that will come out of me tonight. Thank you. Magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. Oh, I had a hard day yesterday, but it, it is okay. It's another day and um, that's how it is. You struggle and make it up to the end. And when you wake up in the following morning, it's another brand new day. It's another chance. It's another opportunity for us to see the way of the Lord and the guidance of his love. Remember when I told you that I do not believe in karma? This is why. The gospel today is a reason why. One of the few writings, um, verses in the gospel, that's why I do not believe in karma. Because it is written in the Holy Bible. Do not do. And it is... Remember, I, I believe this in childhood, if you will remember. If you want your child or anybody in your life to remember or to do what is good and right, never say, do not, but say, remember, do the positivity on on the sentence and it will be the thing that will come into them but if we speak of do not there's the not in there that sticks anyway so on this word today is do unto others what we would like to be done unto us isn't that beautiful very beautiful. And it comes along with what we had last week. Love your enemy and your chick, the other chick. And today is the same. If they are lying, then don't lie. If others are stealing, then don't steal. If others are telling stories to hurt others, then don't. I believe it was Mother Teresa that says, um, we don't have to be all heroes. Whatever we do now, just do what we can because it is not because of great things or who we are, but it is the great love that we have to do what it needs to be done to serve God. 
um, that's the content of it. I have it in my head, but it is not coming out. But that's the concept of it. If everybody, you feel that everybody in the world is not doing right, then do not be one of them. Just like the gospel said, the narrow door, there's only few who will go through it because it is hard. So this is not um, lifting the self. But years ago, I found myself in a tangled situation we're in. I think I mentioned that to you, that people are bringing this news, this negativity of one person to me. And the person that they were talking about was dear to me. So why? And also I was thinking it was dear to all of them. So they were saying things about this child. But how come no one is speaking of these things that they are worried about the child, what they're doing, and speak to him? So you know what I did? I tagged each one of them who have spoken that this is what was done to me. And I talked to the kid with them. So it is, for me, it was a, like putting together all the arms so that we can help each other. And these were stories that was brought to me by them. And so I say, do not, I said, you know, if you are wanting to be this person, if you wanted to be our grandfather, why not do what, do what he does? Live a life of generosity and kindness. Live in the life that has value and immeasurably living the life with love. Do, do not let yourself or be the better man in every situation. And probably I spoke harshly because this is a growing up years. But you know what happened? What happened was all of the people that has said this never took the accountability that I said that, I spoke of that, that I was that was done unto me. Everybody turned around as if nothing happened. Nothing was said unto the child, nothing. And it was all pointed back to me that it is I who spoke those words. It is true, it is I who spoke bravely to the face of the child instead of speaking behind his back. So everyone got mad at me of speaking out, of speaking what is true, is speaking what is honorable, is speaking of what should be probably, they were thinking why not talk to the child myself? How can I talk to the child when it is you being maliciously taken advantage of? You have to be in this conversation, probably that was wrong. So I've learned from that. I've learned from that great mistake. And I think I mentioned to you that after that event, I do not take secondhand story. 
if this is something happening to that person, I go straight to that person. I have learned from that mistake that nobody wants to take accountability of the words that they are saying. No one would like to take accountability of the stories they're passing around. No one would like to take accountability that it came from me and she is just helping out. No one. And I've learned my lesson. I have learned the greatest lesson. One is do not speak ill about others. Two, do not act ill in front of others. And three, do not think ill about others. And for years, I think it has been 11 years since I advocate on that, speak well, do well, and think well of others all the time. Because I do not want myself to be in a situation again. So I refuse to be part of the negativity of life. I, use, I refuse to be a part of bad mouthing anyone. I used to, I refuse to think ill of others. I am giving others the benefit of the doubt because again, I am not, I cannot read minds. There's some precautions when I feel like this is not right. It doesn't drive, you know, common sense. And that is, again, when you speak, God the Father be the wisdom in my heart, in my life. God the Son be my being and God the Holy Spirit be my strength. In times of confusions and I cannot really tell, I pray and refuse to be the cause of sin of others. I refuse to think the worst of others. And most of all, I refuse to speak ill about others. And so, and that is because of the gospel. Just like I said, I believe in this word of God because it is really the truth of our daily living. You can read any other book and it will lead to the same message. You can read, I like Matthew Kelly. I have um, accumulated a lot of books regarding success, and producing a better life. But what I have learned is make your heart as pure as possible, make your mind as pure as possible and make your being as pure as possible. Because if you have already trained your mind not to think ill of others, it will not happen, you know? If something is happening right to them, you would think they're going through something difficult in their lives. You would think that, and that is the wisdom of God for me too, because it will not happen if it is just relying on my own power and strength in my own mind, but it is allowing others to have that chance, the opportunity to redeem themselves. The words, the word sticks and you cannot retrieve it. If you have authored the word, 
that can hurt and slice up the heart of others. You cannot retrieve it. So always, also to, I said, I always speak the truth and I hang to it. But if the truth has to hurt you for you to wake up from where you are at, I would say that. My intention is pure for you. I do not want to harm you. And I rely on the power of God for that. You might get mad. You might get mad at me. But my intention is always pure. I wouldn't want anything bad to happen to you or to anyone in my life. And the heart. The heart is the only thing that I can bring to God when I pass on. Whatever it contains, that is the only thing that I can offer to Him. And the heart also is where the Lord resides. I believe in that. The wholeness of me, that is where He resides. So I keep the heart as pure as I can think of. I refuse to hold grudges and just forgive. Because I want to be forgiven for all the sins I have committed in my life. Just forgive. And let God take care of everything else in this life. So there you go, brothers and sisters. Do what is good and what is holy and what is pure to others. And I guarantee it will, it will come back to you. Do not mind what others are doing unto you. God will take care of that. God will definitely take care of that. You know, um, my brother, he doesn't involve himself in anything that God cannot be proud. Well, uh, if everyone around him does this and it will commit sin, he will refuse to be part of every, what everything is doing. He is poor. He, he doesn't have a lot of things that others have. But there's one thing he has in his heart. That he knows that if God will look into his heart, God will see the purity of his soul. He doesn't have the money that can provide the rest of the things that the world needs. But my brother has the heart that the world needs. And I, I, that I always remember. That's my father too. My father, I saw him growing up. I thought, why is he giving everything out to everyone? Like taking what is ours and giving it to everyone he knows. I grew up with a with a father like that. Like this is already ours, but why is he giving it to others? So I worked so hard so that I can accumulate richness. I can accumulate things and realize later on. Because God will never let us starve. You know, every, even though the, my father is giving everything we have to others, God never allowed us to starve. We always have everything that we need. 
up to the last minute of our life, of his life, God has provided. And all the things and realization was all the things he's giving out are more to us. It would, it might, whatever we have are sufficient enough for us to eat, to go to school, to, to have what we have normally. And the excess we're giving to others who doesn't have any. That's my father. That was his life. And he never take advantage of the situation of others. He, he has his mistake. He had many mistakes in his life. But he, he took ownership of that and asked for forgiveness up to the day he died. And that's how I've learned that really the material things that envelopes us are just part of it but what is in our mind in our heart in our being and what we are giving to others the purity that god is trying to give us is really the whole gift that we should give to others It's deep, but I am blessed that I have seen it. I am blessed that I have grown to see through it. And I am sharing this to you because you know what? I could have lived. I mentioned to you that that was my life. I just remember that. We go everywhere we want. We went to, went to Hawaii, we went to Japan. We were always on tour, you know, before everyone else are posting pictures of their trip, of their, of their food, of their tours. We have done that so for so many years on every weekend. It is just, we never posted. And yes, that's true. That was my life. Why? Because I got satisfied by not doing all of it and just stayed here. That what I have is enough for me, for me already. Every evening, Derek will go shopping. Uh, me, he will ask me what you want to eat so he can find he can go wherever I would love whatever food I would like to have and he will bring it home and I said no whatever we have at home is enough for me whatever we have at home is enough for me that was what my father was saying all throughout our life whatever we have is enough and sufficient for us it is not dreaming, but it is finding your own peace in your own flesh, in your own life. So that peace that you have with you can be shared to others. Beautiful inheritance that I have received from my parents. They can be millionaires. They can be millionaires, but they choose to be millionaire in the kingdom of heaven. And I hope it is not too late, brothers and sisters, for us to realize all of this. Because the moment really that you, you see this through, that it is going inside your heart, your mind, and your being. Fear will melt away in your system. Fear and anxiety will just go and you will know that truly God is alive and he is standing before you, behind you, beside you, beneath you and always above you and your family, that you do not have to worry about anything in this life. 
because your God has your back. And whatever it is you still dream of in your life, if it is in accordance to his will, and it will do good to your soul, you will have it. And we do not have to worry about tomorrow because the tomorrow is we are not sure of, but God knows our tomorrow. He knows what will happen to us. We have experienced the past and we have, hopefully we have learned from it. We are living the today and I hope we are enjoying it. So let us leave the tomorrow in God's hands and continue to pray, continue to dream and continue to live this life pure in mind, in heart and in soul. And that, let that purity be your gift to the rest of the world. This is Laura Lai again, and I hope I have shared my life, my faith, and God's generosity through me. May the Heavenly Father bless us, heal us, protect us, and make us whole always and forever. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us always. God bless you and enjoy the rest of your day.